The Acer Predator Helios 300 is a popular gaming laptop, as it's got nice specs for a fair price. But just how hot does it get, and is there any throttling that affects performance? In this video, I'll perform some in-depth thermal testing and show you what can be done to improve gaming performance. In my configuration here, I've got the Intel i7-8750H CPU with NVIDIA 1060 graphics, and that's the full 1060, no Max-Q here. So we've got a pretty well-spec'd gaming laptop. Thermal testing was completed with an ambient room temperature of 18 degrees Celsius. It's cold here at the moment as it's winter in Australia, so expect warmer temperatures in a warmer environment. At idle, both the CPU and graphics were quite cool, as shown by the light blue bar at the bottom of the graph. Working our way up the graph, we start with the gaming results in the green bar. And this was tested playing Watch Dogs 2. And the results aren't too bad so far. If we manually max out the fans, the temperatures drop back a few degrees on both the CPU and graphics, as shown in yellow. Back with the fans on stock, but with the CPU undervolted by minus 0.150 volts and the GPU overclocked by 200 MHz, we see the temperatures increase, shown by the orange bar. And with the fans maxed out in red, the temperatures drop back a bit, so we're getting better temperatures than playing at stock settings in the green bar, but are getting better performance now, as we'll see later. The stress tests were done by running ADA64 and the Heaven benchmark at the same time, in order to attempt to fully utilise both the processor and graphics. Moving up in the graph and starting with the dark red bar, I started to see both power limit throttling and thermal throttling. We'll see how this affected clock speed in the next graph. Once the fans are maxed out, shown by the pink bar just above, the temperatures drop back a little, but we actually stop thermal throttling. Although power limit throttling is still of course present. With the CPU undervolt and GPU overclock applied, the temperature of the CPU doesn't change. But we'll see in the next graph how this improved performance. And the GPU temperature rises a bit from the overclock. Finally, with both the CPU undervolt, GPU overclock, and fans maxed out, as shown in the dark blue bar, the temperatures drop a bit but the power limit throttling was still present. These are the average clock speeds for the same temperature tests just shown. You might need to pause and refer back to the previous graph to get the full picture. First off, starting down the bottom in the gaming results, we can see that just boosting the fan speed in yellow slightly improved clock speed. This rose much more in the orange and red bars with the CPU undervolt applied, as it helps reduce the power limit throttling taking place, as this particular game uses a fair bit of CPU. The 8750H has a 3.9GHz all-core turbo speed, and we can see in the red bar under stress test with the undervolt applied we weren't too far from reaching this. In this same test, the graphics core clock speed was averaging just under 1900MHz, not bad. Moving up into the stress test results, the clock speeds in the dark red bar are the lowest due to the power limit and the thermal throttling. With the fan maxed out in pink this doesn't really change anything as we're still hitting the power limit. Once the CPU undervolt is applied in the purple bar, we're getting much better performance on the CPU. But with the fans maxed out, this appears to increase just a tiny bit. So the power limit is preventing us from reaching the 3.9GHz all-core turbo speed of the 8750H CPU in this particular stress test workload. For games, this will of course be less of an issue unless your game is maxing out all cores consistently. So how does this performance boost actually translate into games? In the games tested, the exact same Windows updates, game updates, and Nvidia drivers were installed, so there shouldn't be any changes other than the CPU undervolting and graphics overclocking. The same minus 0.150 volt undervolt to the CPU was applied as before, along with a 200 MHz GPU core overclock and 100 MHz GPU memory overclock. PUBG was tested using the replay feature, and at ultra settings, we're just seeing a little 5% boost to the average frame rates, but just a 1.5% improvement at very low settings. Far Cry 5 was tested with a built in benchmark, and at ultra settings, there was also a 5% improvement to the average frame rate, and around the same boost at low settings. Rainbow Six Siege was also tested with a built in benchmark, and at ultra settings, there was just a 4% improvement to average frame rates. Although the 1% lows didn't really change here, overall the results were quite close at all levels. So we're seeing a little improvement with the CPU undervolting and GPU overclocking applied, although it depends on the particular game in question and setting levels in use. These are the clock speeds I got while just running CPU only stress tests without any GPU load. Power limit throttling was always present in this test even without the GPU load, and even with the CPU undervolt applied. 
Intel XTU showed it sitting on a 45 watt TDP in a full multi-core stress test, and I wasn't able to change this by modifying the values in XTU, so I'm guessing it's defined at a lower level and can't be changed. The laptop has a 180 watt power brick, similar to many other laptops with similar specs that I've tested. It would be nice if there was a way to only limit the power if required, say under full CPU and GPU load, rather than just arbitrarily cut it off at 45 watts. But this just seems to be how all laptops work, so I can only assume there's a good reason for it. I've got some Cinebench CPU benchmarks here, and we can see that we get a nice boost in performance with the minus 0.150 volt undervolt applied at the top of the graph. As mentioned, power limit throttling was present in all CPU only stress tests, so we're still not getting full performance here. This is about what I expected based on other 8750H laptops that I've tested. Ideally, with no throttling, the CPU should be able to pass 1200 points, so we're not too far behind the mark once undervolted. Single core workloads are the same regardless, as no throttling takes place there, so less threaded workloads, many games for instance, will likely just be fine and get full performance. But if you need full performance in multi-core workloads such as video exporting or games that actually support multi-core well for example, then you may want to look at undervolting the CPU. Or even if you just want to try and reduce temperatures, it can help too. Here are the GPU only clock speeds while under a graphical only stress test. Acer's Predator Sense software lets you apply GPU overclocks easily in two different levels, known as faster and turbo. The faster profile overclocks the GPU core by 45 MHz and the memory by 50 MHz, while the turbo profile doubles this to 90 MHz on the core and 100 MHz on the memory. I was able to get a little further improvement by manually overclocking it with MSI Afterburner, as shown in red, but this will probably vary between laptops as it depends on the particular chip. As for the external temperatures where you'll actually be putting your hands, at idle the body of the laptop was sitting in the low 30s, fairly cool. While gaming this increases to the mid 40s toward the centre of the keyboard and high 40s towards the back. This was just a little warmer than running my stress test, and with the same test running but with the CPU undervolted and fans maxed out we can see an improvement of a few degrees. As for the fan noise produced by the laptop, I'll let you have a listen to some of these tests. At idle, it was almost silent, only just audible. While gaming with the auto fan profile, it was about as loud as most gaming laptops I've tested. Under the combined CPU and GPU stress test, this rose just a little. And then finally, with the fans maxed out, it was fairly loud. You've got the option of controlling the fan speeds on the CPU or graphics independently through Acer's Predator Sense software. So that should help in finding a good balance between temperatures and fan noise. Overall, the performance was about what I expected for a laptop like this with the 8750H CPU. Just to be clear, the power limit throttling isn't an issue unique to the Helios 300. I've seen this in pretty much every i7-8750H laptop I've tested, but as covered here there are steps we can take to mitigate this and improve performance. These differences in performance shown aren't hard and fast rules, there are different factors which will vary results, primarily the temperature you're running in, application of thermal paste, and even the specific hardware which comes down to the silicon lottery. You may not be able to undervolt or overclock your hardware the same as me, it depends on the chip and its specific power requirements, so don't just blindly copy my settings and do some testing to find out what your stable point is for best results. With undervolting alone, there was still minor thermal throttling under stress test with the fans at stock, but this was removed by maxing out the fans, and remember I'm testing in a fairly cool room at 18 degrees celsius, so in a warmer environment thermal throttling may be more of a challenge. While you could probably improve the temperatures by swapping out the thermal paste, that's not something I can test in a review unit. If I go ahead and remove the stock thermal paste and replace my own, I can't put the old paste back so the next reviewer would experience something different from what you'd actually see with the product, and unknowingly report incorrect information due to what I've done. That said, power limit throttling was more of an issue from my testing anyway. Undervolting on the other hand isn't physically intrusive, and as we've seen it did improve the performance and temperatures in this particular unit with no downsides once you've got a stable undervolt. It's a great way to get back some performance if you're running too hot or facing power limit throttling like we were here. 
Let me know how much of a performance boost you've found by undervolting your hardware and what you thought of the improvements here. And don't forget to subscribe for the full review of the Acer Predator Helios 300 gaming laptop as well as future tech videos like this one.